founded around 70 churches and community organizations across languages, across cultural, denominational barriers that support what you are doing and are behind what you do at Serwanachi. How did you gather such a coalition in this day and age? It's very unusual to have such a large, diverse group of support behind a small organization, especially in a smaller city. Yeah, we uh, actually, Bob Shepard, the previous director, and I went to Chicago uh, years ago. Uh, I'm not even going to guess the year. I, I would guess around 2013, 2014. We went to Chicago for a community, a Christian Community Development Association immersion conference. And we went to this conference, and, and when we were sharing who we were as an organization and that we had uh, 50 plus partner churches, uh, that it was viewed with like, that can't be possible. It was viewed with skepticism to a certain degree, you know, like you're not telling yeah. us the truth there <laughs> or because that, so. yeah, it is, it is truly amazing. But I, I, but I think what, you know, what, what we do is we, we keep focused on the main thing. Um, we, uh, interestingly, um, the, there was a, um, an article uh, that was written years ago um, that talked about first things and second things. And uh, uh, C.S. Lewis wrote, uh, you know, this essay. And, and the, the problem is, he said, is that when you pursue second things as first things, you lose both the first thing and the second thing. And uh, that, that we could dig into that and, uh, and talk about that further. But I think the main thing is, is we focus on the main thing. So from a theological perspective, we um, have coalesced our faith communities around the Apostles' Creed. So our, our statement of faith as a, you know, as a faith-based organization and as people of faith around, uh, we have taken the Apostles' Creed, which has survived, you know, 1800 years of, uh, of being a commonly accepted statement of faith. And so that has simplified things. It's not denominationally founded. It is uh, over the course of time, uh, church founded. And, and then the other thing we do is we, we simply focus on what we do. And so our invitation is, uh, would you like to be participate with us in keeping families safely in their homes? And we've got any number of programs that you could participate in. And when you keep that simple, the faith statement simple that doesn't get lost in all the nuances of theological denominational disagreement. And you keep this is our focus and this is what we're asking you to come alongside and do, then I think it makes a huge difference. I think it's an unusual number that if you take your population that you're serving, which is 70 to 80,000, and you divide it by how many organizations are supporting, representing, and coming behind your efforts, which is around 70, you're having a one per 10,000 uh population representation per organization, that's pretty powerful. There's not very many nonprofits can actually say that. Yeah, it, uh, it really is. It, it, it's powerful. And uh, I, I think it makes a statement of who we are, um, at, you know, as a community. But, you know, David, I, I, I think, honestly, this is the way that we are going to emerge out of COVID. Um, the, the way that we're going to emerge out of COVID is to is to simplify uh, our positions, and I think we are going to serve our way uh, out of COVID rather than argue our way out of COVID. We're we're not going to emerge from from COVID through uh, through different arguments and standing on our own uh, perspectives with regard to things. By serving our fellow man is, is I think uh, what is going to move us forward. Yeah, there has to be something that's going to pull us back together. And COVID, in its nature of isolation, has desegregated all of us. I mean, we're just like everywhere. Um, and, and it's been hard for nonprofits to be able to find how to regather uh, the community back towards the mission of that nonprofit. Uh, churches, their congregations have been spread near and far for two years. And now they're trying to reassemble them into a congregation, a community, a fellowship. Um, and it's really the challenge right now of where we're at, either faith-based nonprofits or institutions, as well as ones that are just serving the community. Um, and it's just remarkable the journey that you have taken as an organization. It's very, very different than most I, I speak to. 
Um, when you are getting a chance to encourage other nonprofits and you're saying, look, when you're trying to build a coalition like we have built, here are a couple points that you really need to lead with that will draw their, the nods, that it's going to allow you to connect with and draw these ones in. Now, you did mention the Apostles' Creed as a faith-based group, but when it comes to just the ability to main, keep and maintain the coalition together, do you have some points that you could share with us? You know, I, I really think, uh, again, back to keeping it simple, um, that everybody is not going to coalesce around our specific focus. Our, so our focus at Serve Wenatchee is homeless prevention. We work with families with addresses. And so that this is this is what we do. Families with addresses and we offer rent assistance and utility assistance. We have a grocery store that they come in and shop. And and so our, our, our focus is really uh, central to that. And so not every church, not every organization is going to have that heartbeat. There are going to be some heartbeat in the community, which we need, that are more focused on chronically homeless population and wanting to get people housed. And, and I think um, what, what we have done is, is we have simply made the invitation uh, and it, it really is a soft ask. It's not a, it's not a hard ask. It's a soft ask and said, this is what it is that we do. Would you help us uh, to, you know, come to do that? <music>